Hello everybody and welcome as we reflect oh so fondly on our free-to-play marathon for the person who was watching the free-to-play marathon congratulations you've made it to the end and now we can actually discuss some things of a more positive nature because on the last video I took out the trash but now I tell you the games that were the best among the almost 20 different F2P games that I played. These are the five pinnacles among them. Number five, Skyforge. Skyforge is actually on this list because I realized I needed five games to put on this list and I only had four. But the reason why Skyforge makes the cut is one, epic hair. So there's that. Skyforge deserves some credit because it doesn't do what a lot of the MMO RPGs do, where you have just this big, open, like, sandbox world that you can do stuff in. It actually takes more of a Guild Wars approach. What happened in Guild Wars was you had, like, a multiplayer area, like a hub area, and then you would go off on kind of, like, these individual missions, expeditions of sorts, and that was really where, like, the action RPG elements came in. And so Skyforge takes that sort of model. So it's a little original, a little bit different. The story's kind of ridiculous, but again, you know, the hair. There's a real focus on style. Sometimes style is all it takes to set one game apart from another. Uh, you know, the graphics look really good. The gameplay, in terms of actually getting in there and hacking and slashing your way through things, feels pretty satisfying. Uh, it's, it's pretty fluid. You know, there's a lot of stuff in it that is very much about image. You know, there's even, like, the whatever it is, Godstagram or spells to it, it's uh oh i think i called it pantheonstagram you have to get so many followers uh you know you can change your outfits and your hairstyle obviously your hairstyle and your glasses so there's there's a lot about image a lot of cosmetic stuff that it focuses on makes a point of but uh in terms of just the game having fun how well it's put together skyforge does a pretty good job number four is appropriately Fortnite. <laughs> See what I did there? I feel like nobody's going to be happy that I put Fortnite at number four. There are going to be those people that think Fortnite is so overblown, and you're not wrong. And then there are going to be some people that think Fortnite is the greatest thing ever. I can kind of understand how you might feel that way, and it should be higher up on the list. But for me, it's, it's around four, because on the one hand, I can respect the fact that a lot of people like this game. I understand why people like this game, it's just not really for me. Like, I didn't know if I liked Battle Royale games going into Fortnite, and after playing it I realized it's really just not my cup of tea, but what Fortnite does is give you really the best possible example and argument for Battle Royale style games that I could ask for. I mean, the graphics are really good, the servers are super solid, the game plays silky smooth. It's very impressive that you can have a hundred different players in a game at one time and have it run so well. And to have the amount of lore and the, the community around it and all of the stuff that they keep putting into it. Epic's doing a great job at supporting the game. There are all kinds of alternative play modes, you can play around with those, they introduce new ones occasionally. So if you're interested in a Battle Royale style game, I'm sorry PUBG, I'm sorry for if Call of Duty thinks that this is going to be a good idea to have people pay for a Battle Royale style game when there's a perfectly good, well-established one on the market that's perfectly free. I'll see about that. It just doesn't rank higher because I didn't particularly have a ton of fun with it. I did appreciate the fact that you don't have to be an expert at the game. Like, good on Epic, they at least made a system where the only things that are premium currency are cosmetic upgrades. You know, it doesn't affect the actual ability to play the game. So it's not a pay-to-win game, even though it's a free-to-play game. Uh, good on Epic for doing that, because it means that, you know, the only real factors that determine how good you are at Fortnite are your knowledge of the game 
and your skill level as a video gamer, which is really the way multiplayer games should be. So I gotta give them credit for that. They made a super solid, well-built, well-executed game. Fortnite gets credit for that, even though I'm not a fan of the style. Number three, Paladins. Surprisingly enough, when I looked back on the games that I had played, I realized that Paladins, even though I'm not a multiplayer guy, and we just explained that in the last game, I did think that Paladins did a good job executing a multiplayer experience. Some of the game modes that are, you know, the special game modes, I think I played something called Furious Reach, don't necessarily function as well as just the basic multiplayer game. When you start to realize that you could do the insane jumping puzzle up the tower before you actually battle, but they're just going to warp you up to the top if you did nothing anyway, those are parts where you ask, what was the point? <laughs> but if you just get into the basic multiplayer experience of it, you know, it does work very well and it's very action-packed and you will have fun with it. You don't have to be an expert in order to get some kills in, do some damage, have some fun. And so I gotta give Paladins credit for that. I also like the idea, more the Overwatch style rather than the, like the Fortnite style, where you get to really choose a character class, and they do that in Paladins. So you get to customize your play style and really get used to a certain set of skills. There really isn't that kind of customization in Fortnite. And the, the other reason why Paladins gets a little bit higher up on the list than Fortnite is because there's a lot of downtime in Fortnite. Like, when I was playing Fortnite, the thing that kept coming up for me was, okay, I'm, I'm harvesting a lot of resources and I'm wandering around the map, but there's several minutes where you might not even see or know that there's another person in your area. In Paladins, you hit the ground running, uh, and sometimes, even though it's really cool that you have like a hundred people running around in a Battle Royale-style game, those smaller like five-on-five, six-on-six battles are a lot tighter in a lot smaller space, and so there's a lot more actual action packed into it. So you're hitting the ground running, you're getting into the heat of the battle much faster, and they do that in Paladins. It runs really well, the graphic style's cool. You gotta give it a lot of credit for that. And it's free, so if you kind of liked Overwatch or Battleborn or anything like that, uh, this is a good alternative to it, and the, you know, it's easy to access right out of the gate. Number two, surprisingly enough, again, is Crossout. Now, why did I put Crossout so far up on this list? Well, it's not because of graphical proficiency. It's just not. It's actually for originality. Because while we've been talking about a lot of games that are like free versions of AAA games, other games that you might be able to play if you pay, Crossout really doesn't have a good analog. It's sort of like if you took a twisted metal, you know, like another car combat action game and you meshed that with, like, Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts. So basically what I'm saying is that it's, it's almost as if Minecraft had, like, a, a blood sport mode. It's sort of like that. Because we've seen some games where, you know, you can battle, you know, vehicles against each other. Not much on the market right now, but there have been in the past. We've seen some things where you create or build, you know, from scratch. Uh, but not really in this way. So the idea of having a multiplayer experience where you get to build your own vehicles and then take them into combat and see how they work, there's just a lot of enjoyment. If you like constructing vehicles, there's a lot here for you. Uh, if you like to just like, get in and have vehicular combat, this is going to scratch that itch because who knows if we're ever going to get another Twisted Metal game. <laughs> so there's that. There are, of course, some problems with Crossout. I'm not going to say that there aren't. You have to play a long time or possibly shell out some money to get the really good parts, and there are people that have been playing long enough that they obviously have much better rigs than you. But uh, it is a, a bunch of fun when you're playing, even though you might lose. Uh, I was actually a VIP several times, so I'm pretty sure I was against computer opponents, though. You know, I'll take the win. It's, it's enjoyable while you're playing it. Ultimately, I stopped playing it for the reasons where I realized I'd have to sink a lot of time or potentially some money into actually getting good at it. Get good, but I didn't want to do that. Number one, 
the very best that the free-to-play marathon had to offer is Warframe. I can tell you that Warframe is the best because I actually, this was the one game I actually went back and started playing again. I'm playing it right now, in fact, and I'm having a really good time with it. Now, I want to make it very clear right up at the front, it is not the end-all, be-all game that some outlets like SkillUp would make you believe, but what they did at Digital Extremes is make it a super solid game that will remind you a lot of Destiny, that has a lot of content, is completely supported by the company, doesn't feel like a free-to-play game, and uh, functions super solid. As I've been playing a little bit more, I've started to realize that there is even more to the game than I originally thought. There are even some, like, flight missions. The controls are a little wonky, but it's neat that they mix things up with the arc wings. You get to unlock new warframes, and, you know, they all have different uh, skills, abilities that they can use, so that's really cool. There's a whole mod system. I got to have a Kubro. It's like I have a little dog companion. So there's all these neat things that Warframe unlocks over the course of time. Now, there are plenty of technical issues that the game has. I, I mean, you'll shoot things out, and you'll see that the graphic you know, shadows of, like, the explosion will just kind of hang in midair. I'm pretty sure they didn't intend that. The AI is either just all on you at one time or is completely ignorant of you even being in the room. There, there's plenty of times where, you know, you'll just walk right past an enemy who's just, like, standing there and then just get right behind him and stealth kill him. And it's like, I was practically right in your line of sight a second ago. And you start to realize that some weapons are really overpowered, especially early in the game. Like, I chose the bow. I killed two enemies with one arrow. Yeah, so especially in the early game, you, you feel really OP. Not so much later in the game. Not so much when you get to other planets besides Earth. But uh, you de right up at the front, you certainly do. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Uh, I actually want to try and get to some of the other planets. Uh, I, I want to, you know, upgrade a bunch of my mods and see if I can get the, the best possible version of a character that, uh, that I'd like to play. It's a bunch of fun, and I'd say considering the price of entry is, you know, free, it's uh, probably worth checking out. I would suggest checking it out myself. So there you go, the kind of five best games in our free-to-play marathon. Uh, stay tuned, we're going to have one more video where I talk about some other games that I have played in the past that were free-to-play uh, and uh, give you some information on how that all went. <laughs> Yeah, kind of a mixed bag. Spoilers. Thank you for watching. Good gaming.